Very welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here to Paul Talton for this Intermediate Championship Final of 2022 between uh, Dulik and Dunshockton. Dunshockton, I suppose, everyone's favourites for the last couple of years, or for, since last year, for when they were first relegated. But um, Dulik had something to say about this, and they certainly made a statement in their semi-final against uh, Dunderry. Dunshockton were expected, and they duly did so, uh, disposed of Nobber in the semi-final. But... Um, Dunderry and Dulik was expected to be a, a, a titanic battle, but Dulik won it by 20 plus points. So, uh, with that, I'm going to hand you over to your match commentator, Davy Rispin. If you have time, Davy, you can give the, the team uh, line out as they are on the floor. Absolutely, Larry. Thanks very much for that. Uh, teams line out as follows. No changes to the programs, which is somewhat of a rarity nowadays. But for Dunshockland in goals, where number one it's Adam McDermott, two, Oshin Foley, three, Alistair Doyle, and four is Niall Byrne. Five is Kieran McCarrick. Centre out back wearing six and captain the side is Niall Minnie Murphy and seven is Adam Keeley. Ben Duggan wears eight and he's joined in the midfield by number nine Connor Gray. Ten's John McDonough. Eleven Matthew Costello and twelve Matt Miles. Thirteen's Aaron Murphy. Fourteen Rory Kinsella and fifteen Luke Mitchell. We are going to have uh, Aaron Levine shortly but we'll run you through the Delique Bellewstown side after that as we pause for Aaron Levine. Sarah O'Connell from the Clan of Gale Club is going to sing Aaron Levine prior to this intermediate final between Dunshockland and Angelique Bellewstown. There's a really good atmosphere here in Park Talton. All the games have been really well attended this afternoon. Junior B, Junior A, and now the intermediate. Run you through the Dulik Bellustown site quickly. In goals, where number one is Ryan Lynch, two Sam O'Leary, three Kevin McCann, and four Oshin Milland. Five's Keen Ryan, six at centre half back is Robin Clark, and seven is Keenan Byrne. Eight is Elliot Lenehan, and nine, and captain of the side is Shane Crosby. Ten, Jimmy Flatterty, eleven, John Flood, and twelve, Jamie Crosby. Thirteen's Kieran Flynn, fourteen, Alan Bowden and 15 is Tom Bowden the man in charge is Kieran Alwell from the Minolte Club man in red in the middle of the field he's just gone through his final preparations strong breeze as there has been all afternoon long in Park Talton it's going to favour Dunshockland in the first half they are playing from left to right as we look at it from the stand side here and Kieran Alwell going to get us underway momentarily Dunshockland the favourites warm favourites as they are but Dulik Bellustown the contenders and the challengers we are underway with Ben Duggan on an early foray forward man who spent a bit of uh, the year injured but he's um, back to fitness and he's back in the starting team for Dunshockland who are trying to attack early in the piece long ball up towards Matty Costello well cut out at source and back there to pick it up is Keenan Byrne Byrne feeds it forward to his fellow wing back Keen Ryan back in turn to Byrne but that's not a great ball by Keenan Byrne big hit coming in on Dunshockland's Kieran McCarrick Adam Keeley there as well he'll form a midfield trio for Dunshockland ball fed forward now to uh, the playmaker of the bunch that's Rory Kinsella Kinsella looking for options left and right finds Luke Mitchell Mitchell trying to cushion a ball in nice ball as well it is it's just evaded everyone and it's going to just spill on through to Ryan Lynch good young goalkeeper who's come through the ranks into Leek Bellewstown Joe Sheridan and uh, Richie Keeley stalking the sideline it's uh, going to be a fascinating tactical battle as much as anything in the early stages. Dulik Bellewstown probably will go quite defensive, you'd imagine, in this first half with um, that breeze against them. They have won the free midway up the half and a chance for them to launch their first attack. Um, sun shining at the moment, thankfully. We've had all sorts of conditions throughout the day. We had horrendous rain during the Junior B final. It was relatively mild during the uh, Junior A decider between Castletown. 
as Castleton won the championship, sorry, against Dunsany. And uh, the wind has just picked up ever so slightly here, and it is favouring Dunshock in the first half. They have a free. Ben Duggan standing over the free. He's going to possibly elect to just knock the ball back. Bit of pressure being applied by Dulik Bellius Town, but Dunshocklin in their traditional black and amber managed to retain possession and Adam Keeley ships a heavy hit from his own man Connor Gray. Keeley goes forward. Now he finds Kinsella. Kinsella looking to orchestrate everything. Now Matt Costlow. Costlow winds up. Brilliant block down by Jamie Flaherty, the hard working Flaherty. But it's come again from Matty Costlow. Swings his left foot at it and gets the open score of the game. That's lovely from Matthew Costlow. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. And Matty Costlow has done chocolate off to a fine start, Larry McIntyre. Yeah, majestic point there from Matthew, but like, uh, just there for everybody. He got his shot well blocked, but he just kept his focus, went and picked it up again. Didn't feel any sort of sorrow, sorry for himself for that. Picked it up, left boot over the bar. Great fight for Dunshockton. Good settler for uh, the favourites. I think the last team to come back up having uh, been relegated was maybe Black Hole Gales in 2001, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been 20 plus years since a tight team has done that. That's what the Chocolate are looking to bridge today, that gap. And uh, they've started well. They've started as they mean to go on and they've won a free out here with Niall Minnie Murphy just content to knock it down. But he was... Rory Kinsler was caught waiting for that ball and Robert Clark robbed him and Dulik Bellewstown have it back. That's good. Intensely shown. The, the intensity, as Larry was saying, the last day against Dundry was a sight to behold and they're trying to produce it here with Robin Clark. He's a county man and he's got the nice little one too. Still trying to burst forward is Robin Clark. Off to Alan Bowden. He swings the left foot at it. Confident strike. Great score from Alan Bowden. The level here of Park Titan. Really good finish by Alan Bowden. Robin Clark showed great enterprise in getting forward to do that. And uh, John Chocolin haven't went in front of matter of moments previous, have been pegged back by Dulik Bellustown and Alan Bowden, so it's very much all to play for, and the game is finally poised. Great take in the midfield by Rory Kinsler. Fed forward to John McDonough, he's got loads of time and space. Where's the marking? And McDonough chips it to the left, and he chips it wide. That's a really disappointing one. Uh, he had probably too much time on that occasion to uh, maybe get the score and uh, that's a let off for Dulik Bellews Town. One point apiece it remains. We have played almost four minutes in this first half and it's been breathless stuff. So yeah, again, Ryan Lynch in no great hurry to take this and against that breeze, Dulik Bellews Town will try and uh, take as much as they can out of every given opportunity and wind the clock down whilst also trying to produce an outlet up front. Here's Jamie Flatterty. He's been soldiering for years. He's played senior football for a number of years and he's one of the elder statesmen in the Dulik Bellews Town ranks nowadays. Ball fed across to their number 15 and the uh, brilliant Tom Bowden, only 17 years of age, playing in his first year of adult football, playing in his first intermediate final. Here, here go Dulik Bellews Town. Kieran Flynn, Jamie Crosby's involved. Ball's played off. Oh, that's a wayward shot by John Flood. And it's uh, first wide for Dulik Bellews Town. Just couldn't get that under his spell. And Joe Sheridan will be disappointed with that. He's one of their talismanic figures. But Larry, a very good start for Dulik Bellews Town. They've settled. Yes, they settled in. Uh, the Dunshockland had the first couple of attacks, uh, put a couple of balls over the head there that, that uh, didn't get their man. And, but uh, the, the league has responded, the league values have responded very well. And, and you know, this is, this is going to be a cracker of a match. And uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Very much so. And it's uh, Dunshockland back on the attack. And Ushin Foley is one of their best man marking defenders. Lovely pushing outside of the right boot ball into space towards Luke Mitchell. He's been tracked all the time by Sam O'Leary. Tight for room over there, Luke Mitchell. And he's been carried out over the end line. Psychologically, these sorts of turnovers in the early stages are hugely important. And Sam O'Leary has done extremely well. Didn't give Mitchell any time and space to uh, collect that ball. And he's one possession back for his side. Here's Ryan Lynch, the goalkeeper coming out bright luminous gloves I've seen bright luminous boots I haven't seen gloves uh, to the nature of these they really are uh, standing out and uh, very much the fashion statement by the Duluth Bellustown goalkeeper but he's a terrific net minder nonetheless here's a touch for Rushi Milan he's been so so impressive throughout the course of the year for Duluth Bellustown he's got blister and pace and he loves to go forward as well and he's trying to escape the attention of Aaron Murphy he's won a free those gloves, Davey, are uh, Mead County Council waterworks issue. They absolutely are. And Larry would know, having been there for many a year. Here's Jamie Crosby. Another great young, talented player. Only a second year playing adult football as well. And one of the new breed of Jalik Bellustown players. They've rebuilt steadily in intermediate football. And it's culminated in this final appearance today. Here's Alan Bowden trying to get this ball under his spell. He's been tracked all the way by the experienced Alistair Doyle. 
He's uh, only one of two players that are over 30 in the Dunchocklin team. Between himself and Niall Minnie Murphy, they are the elder statesmen of the team. Ball laid back towards Robin Clark. He'll usher everything, he'll orchestrate, and he'll play a nice ball into space where it's collected well inside by uh, the nimble Kieran Flynn, I think, and he's been blocked down on this occasion, and another chance goes to begging for Delique Bellews to enter. Chocolate can try and counter. Connor Gray now, striding out with real purpose and menace. Gray feeds it forward towards Kinsley. Kinsley switches the point of the attack. Lovely diagonal ball across to Luke Mitchell, who has been fouled all the time by Sam O'Leary, and Mitchell is going to have an opportunity of putting Don Chocolin back in front. There's a good pace to it, Larry. There's a good pace to it, and there's a difference in referees there. There was a couple of lot of balls like that in the first game, or the, the Junior A final. No freeze, but uh, just a little nudge there at all, and uh, Kieran Arnold calls the free there. An opportunity for Don to get back into it. But, you know, seven points, uh, seven minutes gone, and uh, this would only be her second score. I would have expected more. Absolutely, but they've ridden the storm because Delik Bellusen have had a few opportunities to get themselves in front for the first time, and Mitchell now from the right foot trying to curl it in on that breeze and he does so with some effect as well he's a top player Luke Mitchell and he's been in inspired form throughout the course of the year he's got a first of the day and he edges Dunshockland back in front two points to one we have played almost eight minutes of play in this first half so it's going to be a restart for Lynch once more and Lynch drives it over towards the far side terrace side pinpoint ball but Again, just got a little bit too much purchase on that and the ball harmlessly goes out over the side and it's going to be a line ball to Dunchocklin. Ball played inside towards Mitchell once again. He's having a fascinating duel over on the far side with Sam O'Leary. One to keep an eye on. Nice ball inside towards Aaron Murphy. He's tracked all the time by Ushi Milan and that should be a delete value time ball and indeed it is just a chance for them to relieve the pressure. They've been under the cosh for the last couple of minutes. They trail by one. But they're boxed in down there so this ball might just have to be launched and that's not a good sideline ball at all Ryan Lynch in fairness was uh, onto it straight away good goalkeeping it must be said but Kieran Alwell has spotted the ball being picked up off the ground and he was confident in his uh, decision in doing so there was no real protest from Ryan Lynch which would suggest that the decision was correct um, but I don't think Ryan Lynch will be thanking his man for that sort of ball back it was a really nervy looking ball back Larry it was yeah but I think if he went to VAR I would have uh, debated now whether <laughs> it was picked up off the ground or not but another opportunity for Don Shocklin and, and uh, they'll be grateful for it. absolutely and Luke Mitchell from a bit of an angle makes no mistake and puts it between the posts it's back to back scores now for Luke Mitchell it's back to back scores for Don Shocklin and nine minutes in they have established a two point lead there's been a lot of shadow boxing in the early stages but the men in black and amber stripes are earning their stripes they lead by three points to one and Lynch once more is going to switch the point of the attack across to the near hand touchline long ball well claimed by Rory Kinsley he's a player who's got everything in his game he's silky smooth he can compete in the air and he's a, a savage talent lovely nonchalant knockdown by Matty Coslow towards Oshin Foley Foley feeds it forward to Kinsler. back and turned Oshin Foley hasn't scored yet in this championship could he change that here he won't but he'll uh, play a lovely cute ball across to John McDonough McDonough cushions with the left foot that's a lovely score classy classy score from John McDonough and the chocolate are finding their feet here Larry McAtee and they're well on top at this moment in time yeah they're finding the groove in three, the last three points coming in in the space of about three or four minutes albeit a couple of them from freezing that but yeah they're, they're moving well and they're moving but you can just see the sort of class there Matthew Costello his thinking he wasn't even going to catch, catch it tapped it down to the man that was going by him off the shoulder a great work by Matthew and a great score for Dunshockland very much so and once more they're dominant on the Duluth Bellewstown kick out they've got great joy from it and Ben Duggan is the latest man to have claimed possession Minnie Murphy now chips a loose ball inside towards Kinsley always have the head up looking for opportunities and uh, avenues to play the ball inside to Conor Gray tried to bustle his way through and he's been well cut out at source now here's Shane Crosby Duluth Bellewstown captain Crosby uh, plays it across towards the terrace side of the field uh, Delique Bellewstown still inside their own half of the field but they're confident in what they're about and here's Robin Clark they just can't let this game get away from them though they have to try and stay in it for as long as humanly possible here's Kevin McCann another really experienced campaigner McCann shows and goes still though he's trying to make his mind up what he wants to do with it he plays it inside towards Bowden that's Tom Bowden and Tom Bowden has carried the ball over the line but he's got the decision from linesman Pat Clark from the Sandstone Club 
Joe Sheridan, another sensitive man, he's down there orchestrating things for Delique Bellister. Lovely ball inside, and there's a bit of a space now for Flood. He played it across the Bowden! Oh! Alan Bowden really should have buried that, and what a chance it was for Delique Bellister. It was wonderful play by John Flood to collect that. Played it off then to Alan Bowden. He went at the outside the right boot, Larry McIntyre, and it went perilously close. Very, very close. He was trying to do a, a, a barrel on it and brought it into the bottom right hand corner, just toe poke it in. But uh, he might better off if he just drilled it low on his own side. Yeah, and a let off for Dunshockland. What an opportunity or what a shot in the arm that would have been for Joe Sheridan's men had they got the goal from that. Would have leveled the sides up, but psychologically it would have been massive. Whereas on the other side, Kinsley is bearing down and uh, he's been challenged all the time good play by Robin Clark absolutely terrific play by a combination of Robin Clark and Shane Crosby because that was an iron certain score for Kinsella but it's been uh, well won back by Delique Bellustown 4-1 to Dunshockland 12 minutes are gone and here's Kevin McCann once more leaving his full back Bert playing it back inside and a good hand in by Ben Duggan almost a good interception Duggan working extremely hard uh, he'll bring loads of energy and athleticism to that middle third and he's getting to know Shane Crosby well. That's a, another f- fascinating duel. Lovely ball. Picked out the cornerback, Ushi Milan. And Milan looked like he may have been fouled on that occasion by Ben Duggan. In the end, he was. Flatterdy. Surveying his options. Looking for the long, direct ball, Jimmy Flatterdy. Just content to chip it inside now and get Shane Crosby on the ball. Crosby delicately places the ball across to the far side. Now it's picked up by the elusive Jamie Crosby. Possession crucial and still there for Delic Bellius Town. Here's Bowden, Allen, the older of the two. And he's going to have a crack at this outside of the right boot. But Adam McDermott was watching that all the way through. Adam McDermott's been a really consistent performer. Made a few crucial stops in the quarterfinal victory over Rakenny, which probably has done chocolate here today. Ball played up forward towards John McDonough. He's already got a point. He plays it off to the county men. That's Matty Costello. Costello's got Kevin McCann for company. Costello doesn't mind. And that's a great block down by Kevin McCann. He almost stalked Costello. Uh, and he outwitted him on that occasion as well. The county men blocked down and it's 4-1. It remains to Dunshockland. We have played almost 14 minutes of play. In what, a half in which the first half has flown by at this stage. Because there's a great pace to it and uh, thankfully it's staying dry overhead very decent crowd over on the far side as well on the terrace um, as I said all the games have been really well attended throughout the day and we'll hope for a big crowd for the senior final tomorrow rain, more rain forecast for that let's hope it doesn't ruin it like it did the hurling the chocolate putting on a strong press but Delic Benjustown managed to maintain possession and Ryan Lynch just orchestrating where he wants his cornerback Sam O'Leary to pick it up O'Leary gets it and he's going to take on Rory Kinsler. It's risky play back there, but Sam O'Leary has the legs and he's got the enterprise and the confidence in doing so. Bad ball though, put out well by Niall Murphy. Using all of his experience to win it back there for Dunshockland. Conor Gray is surely fouled and he's uh, going to take the free kick quick and he picks out Matt Costello. Clark is on him and Mitchell has got too much space. McCann is really slow to get to him. This is all a bit easy for Dunshockland and... Uh, that's like uh, turkey shooting for Luke Mitchell. You can't afford to give a player that, that sort of space, Larry. Oh, no, Luke Mitchell, is, uh, you know, from that area and, and uh, even at that angle, he, he's absolutely deadly. But uh, Matthew Costello, very instrumental in that for doing. But, you know, on Matthew's own play, twice he's turned on to the left foot, trying to la- launch a scud missile, and he's been blocked down on both times uh, once he recovered. But the good walk out the middle of the field, too, by, by the Dunshockton midfield. Absolutely, Jamie Flaherty trying to get a foothold for Dulik Bellewstown and they have one possession back and this is a cultured left-footed ball by Johnny Flood inside towards Bowden, this time it's Allen. He's uh, been lively in the early stages, giving Alistair Doyle plenty to think about. He's uh, content to recycle possession back out to Shane Crosby. Crosby uh, tried to play a blind ball almost to John Flood and they've given it up once more from Shocklin. Uh, razor sharp in terms of uh, their turnovers and they lead by four and they're trying to build on it here Costello is well cut out on this occasion that was great play by Keane Ryan McCann 1-2 with Ryan tight for space over on the far side Keane Ryan but uh, once again Delique Bellustown confident but they've given it up on really sloppy play and the chocolate might have a chance here it's a chance it's Mitchell on to it Luke Mitchell drives it over the bar I think he may have went for goal he just couldn't get the sufficient connection but it's another point nonetheless and the Chocolin have now hit five unanswered points Luke Mitchell to the four 6-1 16 minutes are gone Larry 
Yeah, savage work right there by Dunshockton though, hounding them down, throwing them over, forcing the mistakes, and then, uh, well, give it to Mitchell and you know what's going to happen. So, yeah, uh, Dunshockton going well now and six with five point lead. Yeah, Delique Bellews to need to score badly and uh, Dunshockton trying to uh, inflict further misery on them, but Delique Bellews to have possession from the line ball and Keenan Byrne is standing over it, just looking for some movement ahead of him and he plays it up to upsides to Jamie Flatterty. He's been challenged by one, two Dunshockton men. Tom Bowden went in, didn't win it back. Joe Sheridan furious underneath us, but it's Dunshockton once more who are trying to drive forward and really seize the initiative here here's Matthew Costello long ball into space Aaron Murphy is the man to try and get onto it first and foremost Oshie Milan is with him stride for stride Murphy trying to manufacture for some space for himself he's done extremely well could tend to knock it back to the watching party here's Ben Duggan now possession maintained with Connor Gray Gray fisted back to Niall Minnie Murphy Mini picks out Alistair Doyle, the two 30 plus year olds link up in a, what is a very youthful Dunshockland side, only an average age of about 22, 23, and that um, has given them the platform to try and build and uh, get back into senior next year, having had that shock relegation last year. Here's Kieran McCarrick, Mead under 20 player. Nice flick forward by Dunshockland. No Sheen Foley's involved. Connor Gray is surely checked on that occasion. Kieran Alwell said he's handled the ball on the ground. Conor Gray might feel a little bit aggrieved that he hasn't got the free in that occasion. Yeah, he looks to me out of the Kieran Flynn school of referee and that uh, he didn't get a free there. I, t- I thought it was a definite free for him, but uh, um, the man in charge is the man in charge. That's an awful thing to compare Kieran Alwell to, but <laughs> long ball for Delic Bellustown played upsides towards Kieran Flynn. He got a goal and two or a goal and three from play the semi-final hasn't got too much space to manoeuvre in this first half so far he hasn't caught that free at all well either and McCarrick is there to cut it out but that's a really sloppy ball and Jamie Crosby almost got it back for Delique Bellews Town but the Chocolate have it once more through Adam Keeley Keeley finds a pocket of space to get Ben Duggan moving now Niall Byrne Byrne takes a heavy hit from O'Flaherty but one thing about the Eastern Chocolate side they're all so comfortable on the ball and they can all do damage given any sort of opportunity here's Kinsella pirouette turn lovely check back at sides right footed this might be some score it is some score it was a a close run thing I thought it looked quite myself Larry yeah I just couldn't get the top of it lads but um, that just reminds me of you Davey just kicking a point like that for the super super score there uh, for Dunshockland you know and, and uh, they're opening up a considerable gap I know there's a strong win but they're opening up six point gap at this stage and uh, Delic are living off Delic Bellistown are living off crumbs in the last few minutes absolutely Larry and it's now six points unanswered for Dunshockland from it being one point apiece it's now seven points to one with 20 minutes gone and once more Mitchell is out in front plays it off to the runner Niall Byrne he doesn't collect it at the first time Vaskin and Robert Clark gives him the chance to get back he's doing some serious firefighting back there Delic Bellistown need to find their shooting boots and they need to get them on quick nice Flick forward by Kieran Flynn. Terrifically done. Back a turn to Flynn. Man on the ground in question is Jamie Flaherty. Slow to get back to his feet. But possession maintained. Here's Kieran Flynn. The pace. Maybe take it to Leek Bellustown by surprise in the early stages. And that's a really rash ball played over the sideline by Kieran Flynn. Going to be a line ball to Dunshockland who have their opponents where they want them. Can they uh, go for the throat and really try and put this game to bed maybe by half time Oshin Foley is striding forward again he's trying to put Tom Bowden on the back foot and maybe doing what Tom Bowden has done to other sides at various different stages throughout the year here's Mitchell just needs that little bit of space to try and engineer and then swings the right boot at it this is some score from Luke Mitchell absolutely brilliant he's having some game and you couldn't even criticise the league Bellison on that occasion Larry uh, giving him too much room he just needs a little avenue and he'll do the rest well that's it he'll just create a half a metre there just to just get that foot swing the foot and when he gets the swing it's right makes the right connection there's only going to be one result eight points to one eight points to one and it looks bleak for Dulik as uh, Ryan Lynch cuts across that one tries to arrow it towards uh, his midfield 
who are really under serious pressure there because Dunshocklin have uh, dominated in large extents and Robin Clark disappointed that that decision has gone against him and indeed it's going to be brought forward now for descent. He threw that ball away and this is going to make it far more of an easier task possibly for Luke Mitchell to um, extend the lead. They lead by seven, eight points to one, almost 22 minutes gone on the clock. And by the time in which Mitchell kicks this, there is likely to be 22 gone and there's likely to be eight points between the sides to Leek Bellustown following a prosperous start that goal chance for Bowden looks like it could be detrimental at this stage as Mitchell with consummate ease puts it between the posts he's got another and Shocklin have another as well and it looks very ominous at the minute Larry McAtee yeah you know the Leek are going to have to do something quickly the, you know there's still eight minutes left in this half but uh, they, they haven't raised any sort of a gallop at all in, in the last 15 minutes it's all done Shocklin it's all one way that it is. Jamie Flatterty goes up and claims the kick out. They need loads more of that from him. He feeds it forward in turn to his midfield compatriot. That's Elliot Lenehan. Lenehan. Short of options. Flaherty gets it once more, but he's been surrounded and swarmed once again by this absolute runaway train that is Dunchocklin at the moment. This sort of intensity is absolutely incredible what they're producing. A rare ball goes astray and it's well intercepted by Sam O'Leary. O'Leary tries to force it forward now and picking up a little bit of space is Johnny Flood Flood another man with senior pedigree in his ranks Shane Crosby content to just knock it back towards Robin Clark now Clark the centre half back and very much the commander in chief in Dulik Bellustown for the men in green he plays with the men in green in the county capacity as well and uh, he is their shining light and they need some inspiration from him here he goes trying to beaver his way forward content to just knock it across to his wing back Keenan Byrne Byrne with a lovely pirouette turn to escape the attentions of John McDonough now Clark once again delicate ball chipped into Kieran Flynn now Kieran Flynn trying to take on Niall Byrne Flynn cuts back inside lofts one goalwards that'd be some score if he could get it that is an amazing score by Kieran Flynn he barely he, it was almost as if he barely hit the ball but it carried and it carried and it carried and it just got the sufficient distance it's the first score in some 20 minutes for Dilip Bellustown it badly needs Oh, absolutely super super score and if that doesn't lift him I don't know what will fantastic score there just right out of the top draw absolutely can Dilip build on that now that's the issue there's seven between the sides there's about six minutes left to play in this first half and they have possession back again Robin Clark he's going to try and switch it across to the cornerback Sam O'Leary trying to put the chocolate on the back foot here he goes and watch him go Sam O'Leary this would be brilliant Sam O'Leary gets the score two in a row for Dilly Pellerson they're on their feet the flags are waving and Larry McAtee they're still alive and kicking well when you're sick when you get antibiotics you say you should take two at the first dose they're after getting two in about 40 seconds and they say if that doesn't lift them got those two points every point in the first half against that wind is worth two maybe two or three uh, with the win. yeah and they're showing their class they're showing their steel and they're still in this game and they're trying to put a squeeze under Chocolin it's now nine points to three still six points between the sides but Delik will feel a whole lot better about themselves after those back to back scores but here come an ominous look at Dunchocklin once again with the big physical presence of Conor Gray he's an almighty size of a man Conor Gray and he's still striding forward he covers some amount of ground Costello now fed forward to Aaron Murphy there's a man on the near side if he chooses to use him he's going to punt this outside of the right boot it's a lovely score by Aaron Murphy and a great reply by Dunchocklin they've got 10 points in 25 minutes and they've opened up a 7 point lead once more yeah you talk about Conor Gray he's a colossus of a man and I know brother Jerry has great time from taking it thinks he's a great future great potential uh, maybe use his physique a bit better uh, Jerry maybe only half the frame certainly used his physique but he'd be encouraging Connor to use his physical presence and, and uh, he can become a great player with the county yeah absolutely I think he's got everything Larry and he can play ball as well Delik Bellustown have a back and they're starting to just get a little bit of a foothold in the midfield but possession up for grabs here good uh, improvised play on that occasion by Sam O'Leary who's been impressive throughout Crosby off to O'Leary once again he's got their last score and there's a buzz of excitement when he gets on the ball he plays it long into space but not a great ball for Kieran Flynn to get off and he's won it back Kieran Flynn he's cut back inside here's Flynn swings the right foot at it again oh it's just drifted to the left and it's gone wide 
I think justice is seen to be done there because uh, uh, the referee allowed for a mark. If you don't take it, you're still allowed four steps before you're tackled. And he was tackled uh, straight away, so uh, I think justice was done in that case. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Kieran Flynn, nonetheless, will be disappointed with that, having just scored a more difficult one a matter of moments ago. And Luke Mitchell, oh, that's a good call. I think that's a good call. Kieran Alwell spotted a little push in the back. Mitchell was subtle about it. And you'd see some referees letting that go. But in fairness to Alwell, he spotted it. And a uh, really good decision in the end and giving the free out to Delique Bellustown. And there would have been hearts and mouths uh, all around Park Tolton had that whistle not gone. Here's Ryan Lynch. Um, head up looking for options a whole pile doing at the minute and uh, he's just getting boxed in and he just needs to try and keep cool and they have managed to do so Kevin McCann fed forward to Ryan Flatterty's on the loop fists it laterally across towards the fullback who's leaving his half at the pitch this is Kevin McCann fed forward now to Bowden Alan Bowden Cute angle over on the far side, still trying to dance his way through. Plays it off to Crosby. Crosby's trying to burst through, and he was a judge to have taken too many steps on that occasion. A little bit unlucky, probably, on that occasion, Shane Crosby. Yeah, yeah, I'd hate to be trying to count him with the legs are going so fast. He was a bit like Motormouse or Speedy Gonzalez, but uh, yeah, a bit unfortunate there, I think. Yeah, very much so. 10 points to 3, 27 and a half minutes gone on the clock, and the chocolate trying to flood forward once again, but it was cut out. By Dilek Bellustown and they've won it back. Good play there on that occasion by Kevin McCann. Jimmy O'Flaherty with the ball outside of the right boot. It's a nice ball. Was he tripped? Good, cute, savvy play by Kieran Flynn. Have to say, Larry McEntee, he's leading the charge in there. He's really, really good. Absolutely, yeah. He, he's he's getting out there for everything and showing and winning it and you know drawing that foul there. But he's involved in all the good action as well, you know and. Uh, you know this this game like we were saying a while ago like you know uh, but the leak in the last six six seven minutes you know with a couple of great points and that are back into it they'd like maybe they've had another one or two for all their efforts but uh, it was continuing like this a seven point lead at half time for them shocked them would be a, a they'd be very happy with it yeah they would have at the start absolutely but um Nine points to one, we would have thought that the chocolate had one hand on the Matty McDonald cup if Jamie Crosby can put this ball over the bar. There'll only be six between the sides and we'll have about a minute left of normal time to play in this first half. So Crosby's going to step up, taking every precaution with it. Going to take it from the ground and uh, just a huge kick. Every kick is obviously a massive kick at this stage, but when you're trailing and you get opportunities against uh, a favourite side, you have to do the needful. And Crosby... Dear, oh dear, he's missed it. It's hit the upright. It's Kieran Flynn back there. It's back with Crosby once again. And he's wild again with that. Oh, dear, oh dear. What an opportunity for Delique Bellustown. That would have put six points between the sides. And uh, some let off for Dunshockland. He'll be desperately disappointed with the free, though. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and it was hard luck, too, because if, if it hit the, the front part of the post, it had gone skidded over towards the hospital. But it hit the inside and it came right, right across, you know. All it needed was another centimetre to the left and, and it would have gone in off the, the post. But uh, yeah, a let off for Dunshockton and a bit of hard luck for the league. Uh, hard to criticise Jamie Crosby too much there because you could see what he was trying to do. Draw it in with the breeze from right to left, but he probably just set it out a little bit too far to the right and a uh, very disappointing effort in the end. But uh, Delique Bellustown, very competitive in the closing stages of this first half. But here's this Colossus. That's Conor Gray. And Kieran Alwell has said enough is enough. 30 minutes exactly on the clock when he blew the half-time whistle. Good first half of football. The chocolate playing most of it. Um, and they raced into a nine points to one lead. But they've been pegged back at the closing stages. And judging by the noise from the Delique Bellustown supporters, they still believe that they're in this game. Big hit team talk coming up for Joe Sheridan. The biggest in his relatively short managerial career. Richie Keeley, Paul Curran, TP Toulon and, to and co. They'll be more than happy with their side's endeavours. But they still have a long way to go. At half time, it's 10 points to 3. But it's still not game over. Oh, absolutely not. The game over. First 10 minutes of the second half is going to be absolutely crucial. How will the league come out and approach the second half? Uh, are they going to move it through the hands, which they're good at doing? Are they going to put the probe and ball in? Are they going to shoot from 40 metres out with that wind? They certainly got a couple of great points in the first half into the wind. If they can repeat that, the game is far, far from over. But uh, Dunshockland, 
I just know compared to the Junior B earlier, the Junior A, the physical strength of both of these teams, and particularly Dunshoffton, uh, the league have had to work extremely hard to get what they've got. And, and will the physical strength of Dunshoffton just wear them down, and will they push on? A lot to be happened in the second half, a lot of questions to be answered. Absolutely. We'll take a five or ten minute break. We'll be back for the second half with the chocolate needing at half time. Ten points to three. It's as you say, the second half. If the chocolate come out and get a score or two, they'll just grind this one out and, and win, pull it up. If Dooley can come out and, and get the first couple of scores, really ask serious questions to chocolate then we might have a game on. Um, you're absolutely right. I'd say there's probably a little bit of... Um, Savvy thinking on maybe Joe Sheridan's behalf and getting them out, trying to get this second half going as quickly as possible um, with the breeze as strong as it is at the moment. But still no sign of Dunshock and Kieran Allwell did uh, give a quite stern blow on the whistle and he's just going in to possibly try and get them out. And here they are, led by the captain, Niall Minnie Murphy, to a good ovation as well. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the, the level of applause the teams come out, nothing compared to the junior B with. with uh, St. Bridget's or, or Castleton or that in the, the last one but uh, uh, you know the, the crowd could be on their feet yet before the end of the match and just to take the moment to say hello to my friend down on the sideline TP Tool and soldiers with TP at a minor level his son Fergus and uh, by real fluke when we went to get digs from my son Tony uh, who did we go to a woman from Roscommon she happened to be TP's sister and she fed, fed and watered them for me year and he thrived on it that's good old Roscommon hospitality Absolutely. John McDonnell is on for the start of the second half. He replaces Elliot Lenehan. It uh, won't be like for like Elliot, or sorry, John McDonnell will play in the forwards. Elliot Lenehan was in midfield. That's the only change we have at half time as we are back underway for the second half. And it was Conor Gray knocking that ball down towards Ben Duggan. Niall Murphy now gets an early touch in the second half. And Kinsella and uh, McDonough as ever, busy as ever, played inside to Adam Keeley Costello Kinsella now looking for movement ahead of him plays the ball into space Mark was there if he had a caught a clean but didn't manage to do so on that occasion uh, John McDonough Matthew Miles lovely clip ball by Miles inside towards Kinsley. checks back on that left foot has he got the score I think it could have drifted off but umpire said it was a score and it's an opening point of the second half for Dunshockley. Good pace of play and a good finish. The referee wants the restart to take place because there was a second ball on the pitch. But Dunshockley have got the first score and again, Larry, that just could be crucial. It just dampens Delique Bellew's turn straight from the start. Yeah, Delique coming out, you know, the full of expectation, saying we need a good start, we need a good start and it didn't happen. Uh, went to Dunshockton, can deflate them a little bit, but it's their mental strength that's going to make it to happen for them. Yeah, absolutely, and they're on the attack once more where Ben Duggan striding forward with real intent. Mitchell plays a brilliant ball inside, brilliantly done. Moyles chips it up to Murphy. Half a shout of a penalty, nothing doing. That was uh, a move that promised so much, but resulted in very little in the end for Dunshockton. But it was all about Mitchell's ball inside, absolutely brilliant. And uh, there's a lovely diagonal ball played into space. Now can Dooley go a little bit more direct? Here's John Flood off to Flatterty. He'll punt it inside. Good ball too. It, oh, Kieran Flynn really should have collected that ball. It bounced just in front of him and he possibly took his eye off it for a momentary second. And the ball is just uh, caressed over the end line. And it's another wide for Dooley Bellewstown. And the chance goes a begging. Um, but in evidence of what Dulik Bellew Centre are probably going to do in the second half, Larry, they're going to go that bit more direct if possible. Yeah, direct, but the low ball in, that one just skidded, it didn't come up as high as he expected it and went in under the hand, but uh, it was the perfect sort of a ball that you need. There's no point in ballooning them in at this stage of the game, but uh, it just a uh, bit of misfortune and it didn't come up as high as they expected. Absolutely, Ben Duggan outside of the right boot skews that one forward and it's uh, well collected by John McDonough. He's done extremely well to win that one under duress and uh, fed forward nicely towards Aaron Murphy but I think it was all in one motion there was no clear striking action in that so it was a throw ball and it's going to be a free to Delique Bellewstown Jimmy Flatterty is the man standing over it oh no down yeah rugby-esque Delique trying to switch the point of the attack across to the far side the impressive Sam O'Leary is the man who picks it up he's going to occupy Luke Mitchell now for the second half so he might have to be a little bit more conservative than he was 
and uh, try and nullify Mitchell as best as he possibly can. Robin Clark. Now, Flaherty. Delicate ball inside towards Alan Bowden. He's won it out in front of Alistair Doyle. Still Bowden. Niall Byrne offering his assistance. Crosby. That's Jamie. To Shane. Crosby. Inside towards Keenan Byrne. Recycles to Jamie Crosby. Shane now on in turn to Robin Clark. Robin Clark tries to cut inside Connor Gray. Still Robin Clark. Shane Crosby head up looking for some movement on ahead of him. Well, Flatterty plays a nice ball across to the far side. It's collected over there by Kieran Flynn. Was he caught late? He was. It's going to be a free in. And once more, nice quick feet from Kieran Flynn. Yields the free and a big free coming up for Jamie Crosby. Simply can't afford to miss it, Larry. Well, when you're getting opportunities like this and you're eight points down, it's only four minutes in the second half, but you need every single one of them to get back into this game. Can't afford to miss it, no. He's uh, maybe a little bit surprisingly going to go from the ground again. I thought with the breeze behind him, he might elect to take this one from the hands, but he is going to go from the deck. And a huge free and a test of his mental strength, and he puts it straight between the posts. That's a good score for Jamie Crosby and it'll be a real settler for him as well first of the second half for Dalik reduces the arrears down to seven and uh, just keeps Dalik Bellewstown interested but they need a sustained spell of dominance in this game 35 minutes are gone a risky sort of kick out and uh, could play on that occasion by Adam Keeley. he was under all sorts of pressure but he did extremely well to escape Ben Duggan finds Keeley. Keeley, big, strong, strapping fella, playing in the half back line, so he brings a degree of power and physicality to it. Ben Duggan puts it inside to Niall Byrne. Taking too many steps again, Niall Byrne. Kieran Alwell's been consistent on that throughout the course of the afternoon or evening. And uh, Delique Bellius don't have it back, and they can try and build something here with O'Flaherty. Flaherty plays it inside, not the best of balls, though. And Ball didn't go to hand. John Flood frustrated at that. Nile Minnie Murphy plays it up towards Matthew Miles. Double. That should have been a Delique Bellingstone ball. I think it was a double deflection. And uh, Delique and Feel agreed that they haven't got the possession. Well, I think the referee should come up here to bar because uh, he did. He, he did the 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 and uh, kicked it off to the Delique man. The Delique man uh, hit it all right and he came back after the Dunshackle man again. We had a bird's eye view of that from the top of the stand here and uh, Martin Dawson, fair enough, a lot closer to it but very much in the tick of the action. Here's Adam McDermott joining the attack for Dunshocklin. Hello, Gray receives possession and Gray finds Niall Byrne over on the far side, marauding forward with real intent now, Niall Byrne. And he's leaving Tom Bowden in his wake, ushered forward nicely with a lovely clip ball and uh, over the head of almost over the head of Ushi Milan who did extremely well backtrack it to get something on that and uh, win possession back here's Kevin McCann now loose and available on the near hand side is McDonald. here is McDonald, bright shiny orange boots for McDonald, trying to make a real influence in the second half here's Shane Crosby now Jamie Flaherty trying to orchestrate everything but he's uh, undercooked that ball and it was well put out at source by Kieran McCarrick and now John McDonough can try and counter on the opposite end the rain is looming the dark clouds are ominous and the chocolate lead by seven with Oshin Foley on the attack nice ball inside but well read by Kevin McCann now it's uh, not as straightforward as it was in the first half but the league values third still need to make sort of inroads into this here's Bowden he doesn't get that tried to catch that awkwardly Alan Bowden and it was well claimed back by Doug Shocklin, you just feel those sort of things need to go to hand for Delique Bellustown. Everything needs to come off in the second half, and so far they've been frustrated with Don Shocklin having them where they want them. That's a lovely ball over to Mitchell. Mitchell has so much time and space, waits for the runners back to Murphy. He could just chip it to the right and he could chip it wide. Um, Wynn caught that. You need to be a little bit more direct with that. There is going to be another change for Delique Bellustown. The number 25, James McWheeney, is coming on. This guy's an absolute talent. And he's coming on for, I think, Kieran Flynn, who can feel a little bit agreed, Larry McAtee, that he's been withdrawn. I thought he was he was impressive, particularly in the first half. Well, he was in the first half. He was shown. He was shown more than a lot of them in that song. But, uh, oh, David, sorry, I'm so used to having Sean beside me for 25, 28 years. But, uh, yeah, uh, he's feeling very agreed. But, uh, look at you need to get fresh legs in, you need to do make some changes, you know. 
um, the, the riders in the stand or the, the players in the stand will be saying you made changes far too late uh, the league have to take the bull with the horns and go for it and that should be a line ball to Dalik Bell. There's a heavy collision there as well. But this McWheeney, he uh, lit up the first round of the championship when they beat Clannagale. He's been injured for a time and he featured and kicked three points off the bench in the semi-final victory over Dundry. They'll be looking for more of that from him this afternoon. Um, with Dunshocklin, maybe guilty of relinquishing possession uh, cheaply. They didn't do that in the first half. They're starting to do it in the second and they're maybe keeping Dalik Bellewstown interested in the contest. 11-4. Nine minutes nearly gone in the second half. And Dalik looking to get back-to-back -back scores. But uh, once again, it's been turned over back there. And Matthew Miles has it. Now he plays it forward to McCarrick. And this just suits Dunchocklin to try and hit Dalik Bellews down on the break. It's back to Miles. But once again, the final execution is sloppy. Dunchocklin, fortunately for them, have it back to Aaron Murphy. Murphy going to have a crack, possibly... Nice ball fed back and Jamie Flaherty who's been the outstanding player on the pitch for Dalik Bellewstown is back winning the back. Now McWheeney, what can he do? There's certainly a little bit of uh, nervousness about their chocolate. They're making little mistakes and errors that they didn't do so in the first half and they're just keeping, this was Dalik Bellewstown in the contest here. Ball usher back once again. Bowden tries to collect it. It's uh, Nothing is easy out there but Dalik Bellewstown have it. Here's Robin Clark now what a goal would do for them to reinvigorate themselves but they could do it a point nonetheless ball across to the far side where it's pick, picked up by Byrne he plays it forward to McDonnell oh McDonnell just takes it into the tackle and that is really really poor play and that's a heavy collision by I think Jamie Crosby on Ben Duggan both the players up and uh, Niall Minnie Murphy emerges from the defence with the ball Kinsler tried to pull on that loosely but once more than Chocolin have given it up conditions are worse than but uh, the Chocolin really should be going for the throat here and they're keeping the leak in it here's Shane Crosby still Crosby Ben Duggan's wrapped him up clip back to Flaherty Jamie Flaherty finds Keenan Byrne now Robin Clark crossing the 45 he's got the free Robin Clark so they have a genuine scoring opportunity and a little tap on the shoulder for Ben Duggan by Robin Clark. It's going to be a free in for Jamie Crosby and a chance to reduce the rears to six. Yeah, a chance to reduce it to six, but um, Dunik are going to have to keep moving that ball around. He carried into the tackle. He was met with a bone cruncher, dispossessed, and, well, uh, Dunshockland are in festive mood for the Christmas, now known uh, Halloween. They uh, give a ball away a few times, but so also have the league. They kick some poor ball in straight to the opposition. Uh, it's not Christmas yet, it's a long way off, and uh, there's still 19 minutes left, so um, the, the outcome of this match is still a long way off, too, and uh, unknown at this stage. But uh, the league have to start closing the gap further and further. Chocolate are ready in a double change. It's David Files and Connor Duke who will be entering the fray uh, imminently. But before that, there's a massive free coming up for Jamie Crosby. Just inside the 45, he's going to take this from the ground, right-footed, trying to draw it in. Has he done so? I think he has. The great score by Jamie Crosby. He's found range. And Dalik Bellew's turn of back-to-back scores. Crosby once again from a free. It's come 42 minutes in. But they're still alive and kicking. And as Larry says, Dunchocklin uh, being overly generous in possession. Aaron Murphy been replaced by Connor Duke that's a like for like change and the number 21 David Files possibly for Ben Duggan who picked up a bit of a knock there in the last uh, Kieran Alwell just waiting for that change to happen I don't think Dunchocklin are happy with the change so the numbers maybe have got mixed up a bit so David Files is going to have to wait his moment but Connor Duke is on in place of Aaron Murphy like for like change as McDermott goes long and uh, Kieran Alwell has given a free to Dunshockland. Connor Gray was being wrestled off the ball and he's up to Matthew Coslo. He's trying to escape the attentions of Keen Ryan and he turns on the afterburners and look at him go. Matthew Coslo shovels it across. This is the goal, surely. Oh, what a save. Absolutely brilliant by Ryan Lynch denying a certain goal and that would have been game set and match as it is there was an advantage being played so there is going to be a free in but an excellent stop by the young netminder Larry. 
Yeah, brilliant, brilliant save there. You know, he got well down, smothered it, and, and, and got into his possession very, very quickly. But uh, an opportunity now for Dunshockton to tap them over. Incidentally, these did play in an intermediate final before when Dunshockton, back in 1997, when they were starting out on their golden years, and they won it by 3.15 to 1.6 against Dulik. Uh, it's not saying they're going to finish like that in this, uh, but uh, Dulik are going to have to do something fairly snappy. Yeah, they are indeed, um, and Luke Mitchell should have a routine tap over free. It could be the start of uh, another golden generation or golden era in the Dunshockland club, though, because uh, these young, talented players are only going to go from strength to strength in the coming years as Luke Mitchell lofts that ball over the bar. He uh, responds in kind and just keeps the scoreboard ticking from a Dunshockland standpoint. He makes it 12 points to 5 now. We have played almost 14 minutes in this second half. 44 minutes gone, 16 minutes of normal time left to go plus a bit of additional time one would assume um, Lynch has asked a bit much of his troops over on the far side to try and win that one so Niall Murphy is going to have a line ball for Dunshockland and just a chance for them to take the sting out of this for Delique Bellewstown Murphy's going to have to get on with things and he plays a nice ball upsides towards Rory Kinsella. Rory Kinsella um, turns on the electrifying afterburners once more and he finds the onrushing Matt Costello who all in one movement tries to shovel it over the bar but he can't manage to do so I make that only a second wide of the game for Dunshockland and uh, let off for Delique Bellustown. seven between the sides did they need a goal at this stage already Larry? it's looking like it we're about to enter the last quarter and uh, you know um, they say the third quarter is the moving quarter but um, the league haven't made the move but Don Shockley are making a statement and uh, getting a mark inside there and this is an opportunity now to go eight up and uh, it's very hard unless the league got I'd say two goals uh, they're not going to claw back um, eight or nine points no, and the, the brilliant Mitchell has claimed the mark and he's converted a with a plum as well it's back to back scores for him he adds to his tally this time it's a mark he's got a wide array of scores throughout the um throughout the evening here in Park Salton the latest one is a mark and we have played 45 minutes as Larry said the end of the third quarter Mitchell has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 points so far he's having some game of it and Ben Duggan is as well and he's claimed possession and he's shoveled it forward and there's an overlap here with Connor Duke striding forward with real purpose and intent back to Kinsley half block down dropping and possibly the goalkeeper may have kept that ball in but it's gone away for a 45 nonetheless and uh, I think possibly Podge Howard, the veteran, is going to be ready for action for Delique Bellius down here for the closing stages. It is indeed the number 20, Podge Howard. He got a goal and a point when he came on in the semi-final. Oh, how they d could do with another goal from Podge Howard in this game. And as Larry said, maybe even another one at that. But as it is, it's going to be a 45 for Dunshockland Mitchell. He's already got eight points. He'll be looking to tag on a ninth. And... Uh, dead straight in front of the post against the breeze though it's a very difficult kick he'll look to set this one off to the right and try and curl it in possibly or maybe he'll just try and hit this one head on and arrow it towards the post let's see what he does he hits it dead on and it just seems to be drifting to the right and it's gone wide so it's the second wide in as many minutes for Dunshockland third in all and the subs can ha happen for Jalik Bellius and Jamie Crosby has been withdrawn and for it coming on for the closing stages here 13 and a half minutes of normal time to go 13 points to 5 in favour of Dunshockland <laughs> going to be a kick out and a restart for Ryan Lynch here man with the luminous gloves Lynch just waiting for some movement ahead of him and tries to pick out Shane Crosby Shane Crosby got a paw to that good play by Crosby Ben Duggan got a great turnover. He's had some game back there. And uh, he dispossessed Shane Crosby once more. David Files now. To Costello. He's been wrapped up. And he's taken too many steps again, Matthew Costello. Alan Bowden is standing over the free. I'd imagine they really should be deploying Alan Bowden a bit further forward. In. And that's what the spectators are shouting is to let it in. I'm not sure that's what Robin Clark wanted it to go to. But it's found John Flood. Advantage being played. And it's going to be a free in for Jalik Bellustan. 13 points to 5. 8 points between the sides. This will reduce the gap down to 7 if John Flood can uh, point it. He hasn't scored as of yet in this game. He'll try and right that particular wrong here. 
flood stepping up from the hands left foot it doesn't get a whole pile on it but just caresses the ball over the bar John Flood and keeps the league values kind of alive here 13 points to 6 yeah, you know, the, the league, um, the, the, the top winners of intermediate, the won five intermediate championships in their history. But um, the, it's a long way off of making it to six, but they are the leading team as regards uh, championships. And uh, is there a mistake here? Yeah, Pudge Howard has wrestled back possession for Delique Bellius Town. Played to McDonald now. McDonald to Shane Crosby. Ben Duggan is trying to get a hand in. Alan Bowden also trying to get in there, but Conor Gray is the man back soldier ships a heavy hit as well I have to say the work rate that Ben Duggan has got through in this game has been unbelievable he's not given Shane Crosby an absolute inch in that middle third and uh, that's been a really key uh, battle an individual battle between those two throughout the course of the afternoon ball well claimed under pressure by John McDonough John McDonough trying to escape the attentions of the um, the would-be defenders ball played back towards John Flood who has fouled Rory Kinsella, it's going to be a free into Dunchocklin. And uh, this suits Dunchocklin, 11 minutes to go, seven between the sides. Joe Sheridan still barking instructions, but just hasn't really happened for his side. And the way the nature of the second half has been, Larry, it's been so stop-start, I think it's played into Dunchocklin's hands, maybe. Uh, it is, yeah, they're, they're just breaking up. Any little bit of momentum that the league could build has been broken up. But it's been broken up by hard work as well, you know. And Conor Gray and Ben Duggan at midfield, uh, they're, they're, they're lording it a wee bit. Uh, we won't call him Lord Gray, maybe we call him Earl Gray. But um, that's, a, that's a, a cup of tea, I think, for them. We'll say Earl Gray for the moment. But um, Ben Duggan has been lording it. He has indeed. And uh, it's some midfield to have at intermediate level. Um, obviously hoping that they'll get that taste of senior football next year, Conor Gray. Um, look at the power and physicality that he possesses good ball insides towards Mitchell who is trying to claim it over the head it's one back by Delique Bellustown they just need to go for broke here and throw the kitchen sink at Dunchocklin what can they produce they're running at pace with O'Leary on the far side still going cuts back inside checks his run and bottled up and he's won the free good play by Ushi Milan on that side so it's going to be a free for Delique Bellustown. They need to keep things moving here. Ten minutes to go. Um, and only really a goal you'd imagine would try and spark some sort of revival or hope into the ranks. Yellow card there for, I'm not sure was it Ben Duggan or possibly the number 12, Matthew Miles. Shane Crosby is standing over the free. Knocks it back to Byrne, Keenan Byrne. Space. Again, Ben Duggan is back there getting a hand in. John McDonnell, and once more, Duggan is there. He's having some game. He's got through Trojan amount of work. Really selfless sort of player. Very committed as well. 27 years of age nowadays, Ben Duggan. He's one of the elder statesmen in the club. And uh, Kinsel is back there, one of the mercurial young talents. And they're uh, working just as hard. Here's Matthew Moyles. Moyles. Strides up terrace side, unopposed at the moment. Just knocks it back to Rory Kinsella. Kinsella is going to go long with this outside of the right boot, and Mitchell's going to try and claim the advance mark inside. And his movement has been superb. There's a lot of talk about the mark, and that's really not what it was brought in for. But if it's there, Larry, I suppose a good forward player will make best use of it. And Mitchell has utilised that to his uh, advantage this afternoon. Yes, I know, but it also he, he makes that run. He gets into the space, but it also needs a good delivery. And and then Shockton are, are mastering it at the moment. They're breaking up the tackles. There was a foul there. I won't say it was intentional, but the intensity that they're bringing to the game is, is maybe they're, they're, they're giving away some frees, but they're certainly uh, not in a dangerous position that they're giving them away. That's it, exactly, Larry. And uh, another one converted this time by Luke Mitchell, left-footed from the mark, so he shows that he has a left as well as right. And uh, there's going to be another change for Jalik Bellustown coming on where number 26 is Darren Heaney. Um, his brother is on the books with Drogheda United. He's a very good soccer player as well. Um, Luke Heaney. And Porrick Howard, he's only been on the pitch a matter of moments and he's had to be withdrawn. And the Jocklin are going to make a change themselves with the number 18, Daniel Quinn, coming on in place of the injury stricken Alistair Doyle. So... Uh, two injuries Pete with it David Files. one well by Luke Mitchell back in third to Files. 
Now Kinsler waits for the run, he's got the run and he's played a lovely cushion ball into space. Here's a chance, here's a point. Knocked over really well in the end by Kieran McCarrick. He deserves that, he's been outstanding. And uh, looks at this stage, Larry, like it's all over Bar the Shouting. 15 points to six. Well, uh, for a lot of the Wimbledon Championships are now great. Roger Federer, one of my great idols, says that looks like it's going to be game seven match because uh, Dunshockton are all dominant, all conquering at the moment. They absolutely are, and they've limited Dulik Bellew's time to just three points so far in the second half with a strong breeze behind them. And uh, that uh, is what the main story of this game is. And to be fair, when they've presented the chances, they've been so clinical themselves. 15 points put up. Luke Mitchell to the four. I think he's got nine. And uh, it's been some performance by this team. Many people doubted them. They didn't think it could be done, and they didn't think they would do it. But... Um, it looks like they're going to win this intermediate championship at a bit of a canter. And uh, full credit to them for that. Here's Costello. Files plays a 1-2 with Costello who ushers it forward once again. The tireless McDonough. Nice clip ball in by Kinsler. Costello. This would be some goal if they could finish it off. It's in towards Conor Gray. He's going to swing the boot at it. Great block down by Sam O'Leary. It was a beautiful done chocolate move. Probably deserved a bit more from it. But they've wrestled the initiative back once more with Ben Duggan. Pushing Foley. Conor Gray. And uh, the fight in the heart of Delique Bellews Town has it's just gone out of them, really, in the second half. They, they know the game is up, and it's a horrible place to be on county final day, but full credit to this on Chocolate Side, who are continuing to knock the ball around, create some openings and angles, and try and add to their tally. They've got 15 points already. Um, Delique Bellews Town still trying as they may to... Uh, get some respectability on this here's Kevin McCann but there's just no doubt the better team are winning the day simple as nice ball clipped insides towards McDonald. John McDonald. McDonald trying to get a score with his left foot and I think he's managed to do so good point by John McDonald, and uh, a good contribution by the substitute it's now 15 points to 7 with about 4 minutes plus stoppage time left to go right well, uh, it was a great score there, all right, but uh, it's uh, too little, too late, you know. Been shocking, uh, you know, you've seen that very last one where uh, Conor Gray had a shot and goal that was blocked, and it broke out quickly, but he was the one that fucking runs, race back out on it, put pressure on the man, and then picked it up to feed it off. Uh, you know, super work by Conor in there, and... Uh, you know, that, that's what Dunshockland have done. They're work great in the second half and their physicality has just worn the league down who are a lighter, maybe more mobile team. But uh, uh, Dunshockland using all their at attributes, their size, their strength and, and their, their know-how. So uh, great stuff by them. Yeah, Dulik Bellison still plugging away, trying to create an opportunity is John Flood here. Flood tries to go back to McQueenie. McQueenie collects it at the second time of asking, fists it forward, and a uh, big winding effort, and uh, it's going to be a free for a pullback, I think, I'm not sure what the decision was there on that occasion, I don't think Darren Heaney knows himself, but it's going to be a free to Dunshockland, and it's going to be brought up for descent, so Niall Minnie Murphy is going to take this one midway between the 45 and 65, Murphy clips it into the centre, Ben Duggan, so economical on the ball picks out Matthew Costello and uh, I think Kieran Alwell has lost patience with Heaney on this occasion and he's going to book him he was in the referee's ear a matter of moments before and he's going to get a talk or two here and I'd imagine the yellow card to boot that's exactly what he does get so it's going to be a free from Matthew Costello two and a half minutes of normal time left to go Plus a bit of stoppage time as well. Conor Gray collects it from Matthew Costello, who are firmly in control of their own destiny. Here's Duke. Costello once more. Mur Murphy comes on to it. Shovels it across the file. David Files. Big, long, wavy, curly hair. Finds Murphy once more. Duggan pirouettes around Robin Clark, and he's been caught late by Robin Clark. He stayed down as well. I think Robin Clark left a bit on him there. Yeah, he did, but look at uh, I'm a bit more out of frustration for Robin because uh, he's given it everything like a super player, but um, you know, a bit of frustration there, and he came in a little bit harsh from behind. 
but um, it's not going to make any difference and, and uh, I don't know what the umpire or the linesman is having a word with the referee about I don't think there's a need to do anything at this stage yeah exactly uh, Fursley Blake uh, one of the Mead Minor panellists from last year is going to be brought on not a bad uh, luxury to have to bring on a Mead Minor from last year an All-Ireland winner as your fourth and fifth substitute but that is the depth and the quality that Dunshockland have in their ranks nowadays and he's going to enter the fray uh, momentarily in, in place of uh, Ben Duggan yeah Martin Dawson is the sideline official down there yeah I don't know why he was going into the referee to talk to him about, uh, you know, uh, I think at this stage just common sense and uh, um, Martin likes to get involved or show that he's there, but look at no need for anything at this stage. Yeah, ben Duggan is gingerly coming off and I know it won't be to the forefront of their thoughts today, but they do have a Leinster Championship to compete in and the Mead clubs in recent years have had some terrific success at Leinster level with the likes of St. Column Kills. Um, Retoth and most notably Trim in recent years as well and they'll be uh, looking to uh, give that a real lash in a couple of weeks Larry and they're well capable of doing so uh, Absolutely yeah and to be Ben Duggan going off there we wonder is he faking it just to get the round of applause because he certainly was my man of the match in the game and today and he's played a super game and uh, his loss at the moment is not going to have any bearing on the match well done Ben well done, Ben, is right, says Larry McEntee. Yeah, he's been exceptional, absolutely terrific performance from Duggan. Um, went, to, went to college with Ben Duggan, was um, very good pals with him, taught him all he knew, Larry. Um, but a uh, terrific player, absolutely brilliant ambassador for Dunchocklin as well. Uh, model professional too. To Leek Bellustown, going to have a free late in the day here, Shane Crosby. He's had a great year. It hasn't been his day. It hasn't been his side's day either. They're going to make one last change as well. And uh, Mark Collins is going to come in. That ball's flicked on, but it's an easy one for Anna McDermott. So there's going to be five minutes added on here. Still some hopeful cries and shouts from the Dilek Bellerstown faithful. But I think this game has been uh, over from a long way away. And here's Mitchell. Look at him working tirelessly out and around the middle, Mitchell, and uh, showing his strength, showing his fancy footwork. It's absolutely brilliant, and he's been up scuttled there, and that is going to be a free to Dunchocklin. Um, great work rate from Luke Mitchell. He's been exceptional as well, Larry. Absolutely, yeah, and a little bit of Fred Astaire as well, the way he just sidestepped there, and a little bit of the, the shuffle with the foot, and I got the ball through. Uh, he's, he's put in a super game, but... As a team, Dunshockland have been second. And you say Alistair Dye went off there, great servant. You think he's an old one, he's only 30 this year. Uh, worked with him at Mead Miners back in 2011 when I was with Davy Dalton and Alistair. He was a modern professional then and, and, and he still is and a great example to everybody. He absolutely is. And Niall Murphy, I think, is only 31, but they are still the elder statesmen of the team. It's incredible to think. Um, nice to see Mark Collins coming on heavily patched up for Dalik Bellewstown uh, he hasn't played much football at all this year he's a supremely talented player and just nice to see him getting on the pitch for a few minutes at the end of this intermediate final um, great ambassador and great servant to the Dalik Bellewstown club 32 minutes gone there's 5 added minutes so we have 3 minutes left to go and Chocolate can enjoy this they can express themselves they can knock it around everybody wants a touch everybody wants to try and get on the score sheet now and here's Fursley Blake the substitute wrestled off him on this occasion and uh, Delique Bellustown once more have it back ball clipped over towards McWeenie now he collects it and uh, Flatterty's in on the edge of the square McWeenie's just going to try and play this one in but he hasn't connected at all well with it and Niall Murphy the uh, Inspirational captain for Dunshockland has cut it out, but he's gifted it back to McQueenie. Lovely dummy solo. Checks inside and he's won the free. Nice play and nice little cameo from McQueenie. As Dunshockland make a final substitution with the number 25, Fergus Toulon. Coming on for Luke Mitchell. He'll get a very generous round of applause. He's been outstanding, Larry. Uh, ab absolutely as well. And, uh, Good to see Fergus on. He was captain of the Mead Miners in 2011 and just goes to show the strength of depth that Dunshocklin have. You know, and uh, that ball is called in, it's gone up and it's, it's broken down. Was he behind the line? Uh, the referee says it's a free out, but uh, good to see Fergus on. And, and the man who was a place had a super match. A uh, minute and a half left or thereabouts. Uh, he's just going to peter out. 
Sure is. We have played 33 minutes on the clock, still about two minutes plus to go, and there has been stoppages. It's been very stop start and truth in the second half. There was a good pace and intensity to it in the first, but uh, unfortunately that hasn't continued into the second half. And it suited them, Chocolate. They've been just able to keep Dulik Bellews 10 at arm's length. They've never got more than two scores in quick succession, Dulik Bellews 10 throughout the game. And on Chocolate's purple patch which yielded eight unanswered points in the first half has undoubtedly been the difference between the sides it's given them that leverage to just uh, I suppose be professional and, and manage the game and possibly it speaks a lot about the group because maybe 12 months ago or there or thereabouts they wouldn't have managed the game like this previously but they've shown great maturity to do so and um, not be as free flowing and swashbuckling as they have been in different games this year but just be professional and see the job out and they are going to be great intermediate champions and they are going to hold um, the hopes of Mead going into the Leinster Championship where Mead are trying to defend their crown having, with Trim of course having won it last year here against uh, Clara of Offaly so that's Dunshockland's next task they have a little bit of celebrating to do between now and then but they'll put their heads down and look forward to that challenge as McDonough strides forward and he's been hauled down unceremoniously but he decides to just flick it over the bar he's content to keep the scoreboard ticking he's been very good worked tirelessly and he's got another score here Larry McAdee yeah another good score here for them and uh, Dunshockland marks on a uh, lot of intermediate clubs will be happy to see them come out of the grade, but then you look at it and see Navarro Mahoney's have come down to join them. So certainly next year's intermediate is going to be no easier to win than this year. It just takes hard work from a lot of teams and uh, Castletown coming up and uh, three teams going out of it. So junior, senior and intermediate is going to be hard win. Is this going to be the goal? Yeah, it's Tulenburn down and he's just content to knock it over. The main minor captain from... 2011 as Larry McAtee said has got in on the act as well he's played first team football for a long time for Dunshockland still got that class and he, nice to see him knock one over Larry absolutely delighted for him well done Fergus and uh, it's at the discretion of Kieran Alwell now just depend on how long we play we are into the 36 minute of the half and uh, there was a few stoppages in extra time so just delaying the inevitable really at this stage but Dunchocklin finishing with a flourish leading by 10 points they've been very good value for it as well they've been absolutely dominant as the latest instalment comes in via the boot of McDonough it's gone to the left or it's gone to the right rather and it's gone wide and Kieran Alwell blows the full time whistle elation for Richie Keeley Paul Curran TP Toulon and indeed uh, Fergus Clancy as well Dave brought Dunchocklin back to the promised land of senior football the first team to go back up to senior having been relegated since Blackhall Gales did it in the early noughties Joe Sheridan very magnificent in uh, defeat he recognises how good of a team this Dunshockland side are they'll go up to senior with um, hopes of pushing on and really trying to challenge in senior football for the next couple of years they've been worthy winners and Larry McAtee they've won the championship and they've won it well like Trim did last year uh, they did yes the, yeah, Kenny really pulls up to them and just a late goal in that got them over them but you'll have matches like that but yes the awardy winners of the championship everybody's favourites uh, earlier on the, uh, the management is going to be under pressure but they have delivered and they, they, they've delivered in style 17-7 tells its own story uh, you know then Shockton are back up to senior and I'm sure they'll be well fit to hold their own and within a year or two I expect them to be uh, in at the business end of the championship if, if not if not next year so Kugold against the uh, Dernock Shockville, we are uh, the league Valley Bellew, uh, hard luck to the league Valley's turn. Um, that's it, we'll be making our way down to the presentation. Um, Davy Wilson, thanks very much for your commentary. Um, I already said about Ben Duggan being man of the match. Uh, what do you think? I couldn't, couldn't disagree with you, Larry. They had some terrific performers, so Luke Mitchell was outstanding, I think got nine points. Uh, mixtures of freeze, marks, 45s, scores from play. Uh, defensively really solid, Oshin Foley and Niall Byrne impressive. Niall Mini Murphy orchestrated everything from centre-half back. Conor Gray complimented Duggan brilliantly, but I agree with you, Larry McAtee. Ben Duggan, yeah. our, our deserved man of the yeah. match. Yeah, it was Lord Duggan and Earl Gray at midfield, so uh, Shinne will go down the way, and we just also, I mentioned the Toulons, uh, Adrian, of course, is, uh, works with the backroom team with uh, them as well. And Adrian was on the Mead Juveniles back in 2001. So, uh, uh, a big success for the two and family. Congratulations to everybody in Dunshockland. Hard luck to the league. 
Um, they put in some savage uh, performance against Dunderry, but they needed to bring their A game here today. And I won't say they didn't bring it, but they weren't allowed to do it. So uh, that, that's, that's part of it. So uh, that's it. We'll make our way down to the presentation. And we'll be back and we'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you. Bye bye.